Hi everyone, uh, and uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, my name is uh, Tingane Laluku. I'm an engineer with uh, Shape Blue, and today I'll be presenting to you uh, the remote diagnostics tools that are boom, that are being put in place uh, in CloudStack. So uh, this is uh, a brief of uh, the contents I'm gonna go through. I'll give a brief introduction about myself, and then I'll go on and give an overview about uh, the diagnostics tools. And then I'll also go on and touch on, on the limitations and assumptions which are currently uh, being faced with these tools. And then I'll also touch on improvement uh, suggestions. So uh, briefly about myself, I live in Cape Town in South Africa. I'm a software engineer with uh, Shape Blue. I'm a new contributor to CloudStack since uh, last year. And uh, prior to that, I've been working uh, at CERN with particle accelerators. I'm also a very big fan of uh, science fiction. Uh, remote uh, diagnostics tool. So uh, this basically just gives uh, a rough overview of what uh, these tools are. They are basically just uh, two diagnostics tools which uh, target system VMs. The first one is uh, the Run Diagnostics API, which is basically an API tool which allows uh, a, an, a cloud operator to execute network utility commands uh, remotely on system virtual machines. And then the second one is the Get Diagnostics Data API command, which basically gathers and centralizes uh, diagnostics data which could be log files, network configuration files, and, and so on into uh, a centralized secondary storage. And what they, what they aim to do is basically they aim to consolidate, and, uh, they, to consolidate a lot of uh, manual troubleshooting techniques into API uh, methods. So one might, ma ma might ask, uh, why are we targeting uh, system VMs? Because uh, system VMs are very important when it comes to cloud stack. We basically use them for, ex uh, for performing a lot of uh, operations within the cloud. We use them for downloading, uploading, or creating uh, uh, templates. We, we also need them, uh, the, the virtual router, for provisioning net, uh, network uh, utilities within the cloud. We also need them for uh, providing secondary sto storage capabilities within uh, the cloud. So uh, the, the current troubleshooting techniques that we, have, uh, uh, that we have, that we currently use for troubleshooting system VMs are not uh, that flexible and they kind of require a little bit of expert knowledge in order to, to execute and they're also time consuming. For example, if uh, one wants to simply check if whether network is properly configured or wants to know uh, what kind of network set setup uh, they are dealing with uh, inside the system VM. They have to log on or SSH into the system VM. They first have to log on to, through the host, which the system virtual machine is running, and then type in a very lengthy command to log on to the system VM just to execute a simple ping command to test a uh, network. And each and every hypervisor has a different way of logging in this is an example of how you have to log, you log on to a system VM on KVM. This is an example for Zen server and VMware also has its own way of logging in. And you can see that this is not a flexible way of uh, testing stuff uh, uh, with system VMs. So I basically saw a need for a way which does not depend on uh, the hypervisor to, to, to enable the cloud operator to quickly log on into a system virtual machine and execute uh, a network utility command or any other command to, to, to test. So this page here is, uh, is an example of a page that we have currently set in place. It's uh, available in this link for, for references. It, it, it houses a lot of uh, the manual troubleshooting techniques that uh, we currently use with CloudStack. And uh, I've just checked like uh, more or less uh, the one third of the page. The list goes on. There's a lot of troubleshooting techniques. So what I basically aim with this API command, it's basically consolidate a lot of these manual tips out out outlined here 
into uh, API uh, methods, thus providing a quicker and efficient way for the cloud stack operator to quickly assess uh, issues uh, within their cloud. So the first API is uh, the Run Diagnostics API. Basically, what it does is uh, it, it leverages uh, the Cloud Stack Agents framework in, 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 into providing a way which is not dependent on any hypervisor to, to execute network utility commands remotely in system virtual machines. It is uh, available through both the UI and uh, API, and it's uh, basically a Cloud Stack operator or admin tool for, for checking network connectivity in system virtual machines. The current system virtual machines we have in, in CloudStack at the moment is the console proxy virtual machine, the secondary storage virtual machine, and uh, the virtual router. So the current supported uh, commands is uh, the ping command, which is used to test uh, host reachability within an IP network, and uh, the trace route command, which basically displays uh, the route and measures uh, the transit delays in IP, in IP packets. And then it's uh, and then the last one is the apping, which basically discovers and probes uh, a host within an IP network. <clears throat> so uh, in this page here, I basically show an example of how uh, the operator can use this API. This is the list of all the supported uh, parameters. The first parameter is the target target system VM ID, which is uh, the system virtual machine which uh, the operator wants to test. The next command is uh, the diagnostics type, which can either be ping, apping, or trace route. And the other one is uh, the IP or domain address that uh, the, the operator wants to test connection to. And the last one is optional parameters, which are supported by each and every diagnostics type command. The, <coughs> the type of options that the uh, operator can, can, can pass with this command are the ones which come comes packed with uh, the, D, uh, the Debian 9 because the current system virtual machines are, are built using the uh, Debian 9 based. So the operator will have to uh, check uh, which uh, optional parameters are supported by the ping or the trace route or the apping in, uh, in Debian 9. So as a response, what this API brings, it, 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 it returns back to the operator three things. The first being uh, the exit code of uh, the exit code of the command, which is a uh, zero in Unix, Unix system, to show that your command was uh, uh, executed successfully. And the other one, uh, and the remaining two being uh, the standard output and the standard error. In case of uh, successful execution, the standard output is populated, and uh, vice versa. In case of uh, any errors. So uh, a couple of uh, use cases that I thought of, it, it can be very useful for the operator for uh, automating a network facing kind of uh, task within uh, their cloud. It can also be useful for, uh, for testing uh, if whether the virtual router can connect, can connect to the outside world. It might also be useful for the cloud stack admin to know which are uh, network interfaces are used for communication between uh, guest VMs in the cloud. So uh, uh, a typical use case is when one is trying to download a template uh, or an ISO into secondary storage and it fails. Usually failures are associated with uh, network timeouts or connectivity issues and the first thing that we definitely we usually do is uh, log on to the host and then log on to the system virtual machine, execute a ping command to see if whether our network is fine. But now with, uh, with this tool, you don't have to go through all that lengthy, lengthy process. You just go onto the cloud stack UI, navigate to the system virtual, the secondary storage virtual machine in this case, and then you just click on, you click on the run diagnostics uh, icon and uh, run a simple uh, ping or apping command to see if whether a network was uh, the cause of your, fail of your template download failure. So this is an example of how uh, the Run Diagnostics API has been integrated into the Cloud Stack UI. You basically just navigate into the infrastructure and then the system virtual machine or the virtual router you want to diagnose and then you'll be presented with this uh, with this uh, Dropbox here. 
So the type, it's uh, already populated with the currently supported type, which is uh, the ping, the R ping, and the trace route. And then here, the destination is the IP address or domain IP address that uh, the operator wants to test connection to. And then the extra arguments is the optional parameters which are supported by each and every diagnostics type command. So this is an example of what the operator will be presented with uh, on successful execution of the API. So as, as I said earlier, it will, it will return back the exit code. And in case of successful execution, the standard output will be populated and the standard error will be, will be empty. In, in case they, there were some errors uh, or something went, went wrong with the execution of the command, the standard error is populated explaining exactly what went wrong and the standard output is empty. So uh, another uh, way in which uh, the admin can use the API, I just uh, put a picture here of uh, an example execution of how one can use this with a client like CloudMonkey. Cloud Monkey is uh, the command line uh, interface for Apache Cloud Stack. I've also included a link there for people who are interested as a uh, reference. And uh, you can see here, uh, I'm running the API command, providing the target ID of uh, the system virtual machine and uh, the diagnostics type, which in this case is a ping, and an IP address. I just put there uh, an unreachable IP address, and then I just give optional parameters that the ping command should run for three times. And then it comes back, and uh, I can see here, if, if I'm not sure if you can see, but you can see from the exit code that the exit code which was returned in this case is one. And then you see that, okay, the command was executed, but the network was not reachable. All your, your, your packets were lost. For this case, it, it's, it, it's not going to populate the standard error because the command was executed uh, successfully itself. And this is the output that the ping command brings that, okay, I did try to execute, but I didn't find the, the host, which means your IP address is not reachable. So th those are the kind of options that uh, you can get. In case, for example, uh, one provides a, uh, an incorrect IP address type here, the ping command itself will send data to the standard error output saying that uh, unknown or unsupported network type. And in that case, the standard error will be the one which is populated with that kind of command. So a couple of limitations which uh, come with this API. At the moment, it, it currently only works with uh, system virtual machines. And uh, it's only allowed for the root admin user for security reasons. And uh, all the API uh, calls are executed from the management server, and then it basically takes care of logging into the system virtual machine and executing uh, the network type. And it only supports uh, three commands uh, at the moment, which are Debian-based, which is uh, the ping, the trace route, and the R ping. And it does not bypass any limitations which, are, which come with uh, the supported diagnostics type. So uh, a couple of future ex uh, expansion plans that I had, uh, I thought maybe perhaps we could allow uh, a normal user uh, to use this API with a couple of restrictions which are being controlled or set by the root admin. And uh, I've also been uh, considering extending uh, the use of this API to, to hypervisor hosts and uh, guest virtual machines. And also uh, another uh, feature expansion plan is to support uh, more, uh, basically to make uh, the, the life of the cloud stack operator easier by uh, supporting a little bit more commands that will, will be useful uh, for them. So it will be very useful to get some feedback from uh, users of these APIs to basically come back and tell us that, okay, uh, here's another command that we actually think that might help us. Could you please also add support for this command? So that's uh, also along the pipeline. And I've also considered that perhaps it could also be used for gathering uh, a lot of uh, useful cloud stack matrices. Like, uh, for example, we can use it to gather metri uh, metrics for the virtual router. We might want to know how many guest virtual machines are connected to a virtual router at, uh, at a certain time. 
how many users or how many services are currently running on the virtual router. That's also something which we can look at. We can also maybe want to know uh, how hypervisor matrices, like for example, how, how many guest virtual machines are running on that uh, specific hypervisor or host at this time. How, how much CPU is left, how much RAM is being consumed, uh, how much power, those kind of things, how much disk space is left. It's uh, also a couple of things which are along the pipelines for, for this API. So uh, <coughs> I've also provided uh, a couple of links here to uh, the feature specification document and uh, the community pull requests. The first pull request was made for the API and then a later pull request came for UI integration. Both pull requests have been merged in master, so this feature is available uh, as in master. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all about uh, the RAN Diagnostics API. So uh, any questions regarding the RAN Diagnostics API? Okay, thanks. So moving on to the second one, the Get Diagnostics Data API. Uh, similar to the previous API, it also basically targets uh, system VMs as well. So what happens is uh, CloudStack generates a, a lot of uh, log files and data and all those things which can be used by the CloudStack admin for, for diagnostics and debugging purposes. But the thing is that what, what CloudStack does, it, these files are kind of scattered in, in various places and it, it, it kind of makes it very difficult to go and collect these files and analyze them. And uh, another example for, if you want to know the IP tables, you basically have to execute a command and then save the output and all those things. So what this API aims to do, it, it, it wants to take care of all of that for the cloud stack admin. It will basically go and gather all these log files or property configuration files in all these various places also check the IP tables, the IF config, DNS masks, uh, whatever files that uh, the cloud operator might be interested in for debugging uh, purposes. And then it gathers all these log files into a central location, which in this case will be the secondary storage. And then it, 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 it basically stores a compressed version of this file in secondary storage and presents the operator with a URL link that he can just simply click and download these files for, for, for analysis. So uh, similar as well for security reasons, this API is only available for the root admin and it takes as parameters as well, the target virtual machine ID and uh, the diagnostics data type in this case. Uh, supported types, uh, there will be defaults which are log files, IP table rules, uh, DNS files, uh, user data and property files, but this is controlled by a global setting that the admin operator can set himself. If they want to extend the type, the, the type of files that they want to do, they simply add that, okay, I also want to retrieve this kind of files and the API will take care of going into the system virtual machine, grabbing the file and compressing it and sending it to secondary storage. Details is an optional parameter that, uh, it's an optional parameter that the operator can specify that, okay, on top of the files that you support, can you also maybe get for me uh, this other file in this, in this specific location? So what the API will do, it will, it will go to the, to the specific location which has been specified by the admin and look for that file and grab that file, bundle it together with the supported uh, files and send them to secondary storage. So as a response, it returns back a URL link that the operator can simply click to download the, their files. And uh, yeah, it basically retrieves log files, property files, uh, IP tables, IF config, and uh, root files. So it's uh, currently a work in progress API. Uh, PR will, will come soon in, uh, in master, in upstream. So this is, uh, this is kind of uh, the beginning to end flow of how this uh, API basically works. So it will take uh, the input there and then it goes on, it goes on as it will retrieve the files and then it returns uh, a success response to the admin, in this case, it will be the URL, and then the admin can basically just go there and download their files. 
So uh, yeah, it uh, <coughs> it will uh, it will basically just uh, retrieve the files from the system virtual machine, compress the files, and then move those files to secondary storage and return back to the operator URL link. And uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, this is uh, a couple of global settings which uh, will be available for the root admin. Uh, the most important of these settings here are the, I will say the first three ones. What they basically do is they take care of cleanup so that the operator does not have to worry about uh, going into secondary storage and deleting uh, the retrieve files and all those things. That's giving him or her the flexibility of uh, executing this API several times without having to worry that, oh, okay, uh, I have a whole bunch of files now in secondary storage. I have to go there and do cleanup. So they basically just uh, take care of uh, garbage collection and uh, give the operator again the, the flexibility of setting the interval at which they want the garbage collection to, to basically run. And then the other important one here, it's uh, the diagnostic data supported type. It's the one which I spoke of earlier, in which, which is expandable by, by the operator as well. They just go there and uh, put in the kind of uh, supported data files they want to, to retrieve uh, each and every time they run this uh, API, which basically just make, makes it easier for, for them. And there's more or less uh, kind of different uh, supported types for different system virtual machines. For example, uh, DNS kind of files and DHCP files uh, only make sense to retrieve those files for the virtual router, and it doesn't really make sense to to want those kind of files for the secondary storage virtual machine, for example. So that's what this uh, this setting will will basically be control. The last one being uh, a kind of like a, a disk threshold as to which this API will execute. It's 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 basically also a setting for the for for the operator to kind of set that okay if I am running low on secondary storage, don't exec, uh, don't get me the files. So it's it's kind of a useful thing when you're trying to execute the API. It will basically check your your secondary storage data and then it will say okay you don't have enough uh, you don't have enough space in your secondary storage. It's you have this amount of of space. So it's kind of a useful feature because in case the operator was not aware of how much space was running in, in how much space is left in their secondary storage, the API will basically present them and then they can kind of do cleanup as well. So in, in, in terms of uh, future plans, I've also thought of this as well that uh, perhaps we can, I can also extend the API to include cloud stack management server log files as well to, to, to be retrieved and also extend to uh, the hypervisor hosts and uh, guest virtual machines. I've also been thinking uh, of uh, extension to, to network service providers. This could be uh, hardware appliances or virtual appliances, examples being the Citrix NetScaler, the VMware NSX or the OVS to, to name a few. This, uh, just to name a few that we, we currently support with CloudStack. And I also thought that it could also be used for gathering uh, useful uh, metri uh, metrics for CloudStack as well. Examples being uh, management server clusters, you might want to know uh, Java virtual machine metrics, uh, the memory, uh, CPU usage of uh, and uh, available uh, RAM in your management server clusters. And uh, another thing, I also thought that it might be useful for gathering system virtual machine matrices, metrics as well. Examples being uh, the operator might be interested in knowing uh, uh, which, uh, <coughs> which download jobs are currently running within the cloud, which consoles are active, how many user uh, sessions are currently active. I thought maybe it might be useful for gathering the, those metrics as well, grouping uh, the data into files and then uh, sending it for the operator for later retrieval. And uh, that's just to name a few. The list can go on as to what we can do with these APIs. We just have to get people, operators, uh, telling us wh wh what it is that they are interested in seeing this APIs uh, do, and then can look into 
implementations. And uh, that's all for me. Thank you for your time. Any questions? Oh yes, I uh, forgot to mention that it, it doesn't allow any non-alpha numeric type. It only allows a period and a hyphen, and that's it. Okay. okay uh, if there's no more questions, thank you for your time.